opera. Without, without a song. Multi. You're yeah. doing it the hard way without <laughs> a tune. <laughs> yeah. So that's another thumbs down. Colin, I'll come to you. Well, first. not a strong enough melody, I didn't yeah. think, anyway. You know, you've got to start with a good melody, you know what I mean? You know, and it didn't quite do it for me. Yeah. And I thought the images on the video were ill-matched with, uh, with what was happening uh, vocally as well, you know. Made you want to buy a bra. Made me want to buy a bra. <laughs> so <laughs> it takes very little to make me want to buy a bra, actually. <laughs> you wouldn't go out in a thunderstorm wearing that suit, though, with the, you know, the spiky suit, would you? Yeah, you're well, I don't know. It all depends what you're into. I suppose so. Electricity <laughs> so so can be fun. So you won't be buying that. Do you listen to much new music generally? Well, it sort speaking? of comes through my door. I don't go out yeah. and buy any. It, you know, people are constantly posting me their CDs. And Is this people who, who, who fear for you or care about you? or, or, or they just, I just suppose they want some sort of, you know, regal approval. They want their yeah. scrofula cured by the royal touch, you know. So uh, we, we just went to America <coughs> for, for three weeks to do some promo stuff, and I came back with about 75 CDs that people had given me. You know, people that uh, come up to you at these yeah. signing sessions, and here's my band, and here's a band I recommend, or people from record companies will come along and say, here's all our new produce and stuff. So uh, we don't have to look for new music. It sort of c it comes in, you know. So there's a lot of CD frisbeeing goes on in yeah. the world. A lot of coasters. There's a lot of coasters and a lot of flower pot holders. <laughs> love on love, Candy Staten. Don't you mean Candy Staten? <laughs> you probably remember the. Uh, I love the video. I love yeah. crappy videos. <laughs> I like anything that looks crappy, I love it. They yeah. did that for four pence, didn't they? Exactly. Well, and they had change. <laughs> change for fish and chips <laughs> and the tram exactly. journey out. Hey. I think the video had some good ideas, I have to say, but uh, it was giving off confusing um, signals with the music I was hearing, you know. I didn't think they matched up all that well. No, I didn't like the song much. You, did you say it was an old Lloyd George number? <laughs> boy George. Oh, Boy George. Oh, In okay. Oh, that, club, that's interesting then. Yeah. Um, An old Lloyd George number would have been really good. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think he exists on record, does he? But uh, oh, I've got some old <laughs> cylinders of him. <laughs> yeah. Candy Staten's probably only known for those two songs, really, in the, this country. You've got the love and uh, and Young Hearts Run Free. You probably that's the one. Probably remember them that's both. The one. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Young Hearts Run Free was pretty yeah. good. That's some good lyrics. But that went nowhere for you. <coughs> that one? No, I didn't like the song. I love the video. Yeah. It's so crappy. I love all that crappy kind of toy stuff. And We've done a few things with crappy toys and things. I, I love all that. Yeah, yeah. There's a real amateurishness so I really, that really appeals to me. Well, we can almost wheel her out from backstage. Uh, what can do? Oh, do you recognise that voice? Jukebox jury style, but uh, she's going to be on the show next week. Oh, well, so I'll keep, uh, you keep the seat warm for oh, her. Well, she'll be right best, best tell her not to sit on this one. <laughs> be a few funny liquids and stuff, you know, you wouldn't want to... I'll tell her what you said. We'll an international incident, you know. No, no. So, so thumbs up or thumbs down? Not that we do. Um... Anything. Oh, sort of big toes <coughs> sideways, right. really. And that's only for the video. For the video, not well, pick not a favourite from them. Do you like any of them? Yeah, I like the video of that okay, one. Okay, video of that one, that'll do. Yeah. And I like the strings of the first one with Martine, what's her name, before she started singing. Martine McCutcheon, okay. Yeah. And then it was CAC. And then it was CAC. Right, if you want a video played on the show or a <coughs> point made, you can write to me here at Inside Tracks. We have a video from Oasis. Our thoughts are, of course, with Liam Gallagher, whose BMW was ambushed. He's been ambushed. nailed up this week, has he, though? No, uh, oh, he's, right. uh, he's had his BMW broken into, or ambushed at least. Well, they redecorated it for Yep, him. by fans outside London's trendy Conran shop just before the England-Poland match a weekend ago. Witnesses were shocked to see drunken yobs fighting beside the car and even more surprised to discover they weren't Liam and Patsy. Now, there is some good news, though. The glass from the BMW smashed windscreen and the house brick that did the damage have both been recovered. The Conrad shop is calling them a coffee table and selling them for 800 quid. <laughs> Acquiesce Oasis, of course. My guests are Andy and Colin from XTC. And what was it you just said collectively about Oasis? I think just turn the fuzz box off and it would be Jerry and the Pacemakers, actually. <laughs> yeah, or Freddy and the or Dreamers. Or Freddy and the Dreamers, which yeah. is even worse. Those clips of London's Earl's Court were from the gig that s smashed the record for the biggest indoor gig ever, 70,000 people. Oasis and their Britpop chums did a lot to revitalise. Well, it was inspired to uh, get on the show on the week that we've majored with our big live venue piece, uh, a band who famously gave up live performances about 15, 16 years ago, didn't you? But yes. uh, what's the worst toilet you ever performed well, in? I was just thinking about that while that was playing, actually. It was, was either a gig we did in Wiesenhall in Germany, yeah. Yeah, and uh, there was no changing room. We had to go and get changed in the club owner's house, which was across the road. 
we walked across the road and there's his family having tea in front of the news, you know, on the yeah, telly. Yeah, and we're yeah. sat there sort of next to him, toweling down and you know, <laughs> trying to tune up. We, didn't, we did it with borrowed gear, so we were tuning up to some woman with a Spanish guitar on the TV. Was that, is she playing in E? Wait a minute, she's going to tell the family to stop eating there, we can't hear to tune up. And then when we got on stage, it was just thousands of surly bikers all facing the other way. Sort of, you know, tins of beer and then over their shoulder to mm. us on the stage. Mm. I think some of the London pubs were pretty iffy at the time, around about 1977, you know. Mm. A lot of the toilets didn't have locks on the doors, so you just had a piece of string. If you were sat on the bowl, you were just holding this piece of string, praying somebody wouldn't prize the door. A bowl? Luxury! <laughs> I used to dream of a bowl! <laughs> Actually, some of those London gigs are so bad, you weren't sure whether the toilet was preferable. Yeah, yeah, the toilet was, was a, a wash with slightly less piss than the stage was. You, yeah, you mistake so it for the stage area. Exactly. So. Yeah. The cinemas have learnt their lessons, haven't they? Go on. Yeah. I have to say, I disagree with these people yeah. about making these, these gigs like that. Because, I mean, the reason those gigs are like that is because they're greedy and they want more money and they're, they're reticent to spend any yeah. money to make the gig nicer for the punter. But isn't it the fact that it's grotty and awful and uh, that kind of adds to what you go to a gig for? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want to go to a gig and it's all sort of nice seats and you've got usherettes bringing you stuff and the band are very polite. And you want to go to a gig where it's all hot, dirty and sweaty and you're covered in beer and, you know, you've got your tongue down somebody's throat. I Some wonder bouncer's what throat. No, you've <laughs> got your, no you, it, it's the kind of danger element and the mucky element and then surely that's what people go for. I wonder if what they really want, though, is, is kind of designer grunge. You know, they, they actually want it to be clean, they want it to be well thought through, they yeah, want it to be convenient, all the rest of it. Look at that filth on the stage. Oh, thank but goodness it isn't near me. <laughs> but they want the whole thing to be, uh, much as the Scarlet used to be actually, just coated with matte black paint all the way through. So you kind of, you know, you felt it was underground. Yeah, but, so uh, well, I mistrust a lot of their, their you know, they're saying, oh, these venues have got to be better. And it's, you know, people's greed have kept them grotty over the years. Yeah. I think it's a young guy's game, but personally, you know, I, I personally, I like to... Uh, now you're starting to sound like your father. I know. He's well, starting to look like his mother. <laughs> 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 I, I, I just like cold beer delivered to me by a shapely waitress holding a tray, you know. It's that was your rider, was it? <laughs> <laughs> just for him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just for me. I used to have the sort of little flat-headed midget come with mine, with a warm cocoa, you know, <laughs> cold cocoa. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a bit civilised, is there, really? You know, I, I just think the gat gig stuff is just a young guy's game. It's a million miles away from what we do now. Yeah, know? yeah. I mean, you've really gone out of your way with the last like half dozen albums to get completely away from the kind of two guitars and a. Well, it's something you do when you're 21. You know, you like to make a racket, don't you? You know, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's what you well, like you did. You did. Like you did. Uh, you know, when I'm 43, I don't want to do that anymore. You yeah, know? that's right. No, I don't think we. Um, I must say that whenever I went to gigs, even as a young man, I did. Uh, I did leave a lot of them feeling really disappointed by a lot of the groups. Yeah. You know, I thought. They're not trying, they're not bothering, or they're crap, or, I mean, I used to go to gigs personally for girls, that was the only reason <laughs> I'd go. <laughs> I, I remember what I did against the back wall with girls, much more than what band was doing what on stage. And you won't find yeah. any at our gigs, anyway. No, you won't find any, <laughs> we sort of tended to be a bit of a nerd magnet. It's we? lucky yeah. we didn't all do that, or bands like you would have gone on stage and just seen a row of backs. Nothing yes, else. sounds like the gig in Wiesenhurl. <laughs> <laughs> These um, Made of Earl studios here have to be one of the best venues in the country for live music, if only because the head count on stage tends to our session guests. Do you think anyone jumped in the air at the end there? <laughs> 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 what do you reckon? Well, that was pretty reasonable. We I extracted a compliment from you halfway yeah. through that. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was melodic at least. Yes, yeah, so curmudgeonly like us, it's as good as any Oasis song, which it, it was, I think. Yeah. yeah I well, think they've, um, you, you, you don't know whether they're from Bis Bristol, or were they, they, they met, I think, at college, or certainly uh, you know, at that stage yeah. of their the life. The Sunshine Coach just happened to break down on a tour <laughs> of Bristol Zoom. It's a bit difficult commenting on just one listen, you know. It's, uh, yeah. you, know you want to give it a bit, don't Well, you? that on repeated listening is very memorable. I think that's probably their best yeah. song. Yeah, it's quite catchy. Yeah, I thought it was a lot better than the first, yeah. the first thing, which was sort of School of Bad Sean Lennon or something, the first yeah. one. You know. But that one was uh, half decent, I think they'd say. They probably just not on the bus back to Eumist or something. Uh, Bristol tends to be a place where people kind of cross paths and then move on from, isn't it? Mm, or just pollute. Instead <laughs> of Bristol, we'll leave you litter. <coughs> yeah. Built on piracy, fags and... Piracy, and the slave trade. And the slave trade, so... Yeah. So at least, well, at least something good came out of Bristol, there you are, straw. What's coming up for you? Well, we've already kind of mentioned this, this new album, Apple Venus Apple Venus Volume 1 is in the butchers right now. Yep. 
And uh, as soon as we get his garage painted, we'll be doing Apple Venus yeah, Volume 2. It's almost done. It's almost painted. You've just got to decorate the control room. And that's, that's about it, yeah. yeah. And get some equipment, of course.